uh, the, the mirror <laughs> image on their laptop. So welcome. I hope you enjoyed last week. Thank you everyone for watching. And we are going to do some painting today too. If you haven't got paints, please don't worry because you can always use felt tips. And I'll go through, um, as we go, I'll show you a few ways of doing felt tips or um, pastels if you want to. But I'm going to be using acrylic and we are looking at Impressionism. So Impressionism is a type of art that um, a lot of artists today do, but the whole thing started back in the Victorian times. And Van Gogh, or Van Gogh, depends how you say it, he, um, he was a Dutch painter, and he wasn't very famous when he was alive, but he was very famous when he then died. Um, we're just getting the technology ready already uh, at the same time. And um, he painted this in 1889, and uh, it's called A Starry Night, a year before he died. So we're going to have a go at it today. Now, the Impressionist movement is all about using um, choosing a subject or something to paint that is real. So when Van Gogh painted this, it was real. It, it was a scene that he was painting um, live. And he used bright, bright colours. And they also used thick paint. So we're going to have a go today at applying paint quite thickly. But we're also going to have a go at using some brush strokes to get some, some movement and some lines in there. So this is the one that I did in acrylic that you can have a go at. This is what I'm going to demonstrate today. However, and my things are falling in my paint. You can, if you don't have paints, don't worry, you can do it in felt tip pens, which we've got there. And as you can see, we've got all those marks and movement. It's not flat colour. It's nice and it's almost scribbly, but it's not. It's kind of um, thoughtful scribbling, if that makes sense. We're going in a certain direction and we've got a pastel version as well, oil pastels. So you don't have to use paint if you haven't got it. If you have got it, brilliant, but it will still be the steps. So the steps that I'm gonna go through, you can do in pastels, felt tips, pencil crayon, chalks, whatever you've got, so don't worry. But we're going to do it in paint today, aren't we, Eileen? Yes. Yes. So just so that you've got all the equipment you need, Oh, hi, Lucy. Nice to see you again. And um, just so you've got everything that we need, we have a water pot with water in it. We have several brushes. I've got a big brush. I'm going to do mine, um, my piece so that you can see it really clearly. I've chosen A3 as my scale, the size of my paper. Isla's going to do hers A4. If you're using, if you're doing pencil, crayon or felt tip pen, best to choose a smaller piece of paper like A4 rather than going big but if you want to challenge yourself have a go challenge scale is always one of the things that you can challenge yourself on so if you're thinking oh you know let me i'm a confident artist and i want to improve a good way of doing that is to go bigger get bigger and bigger bigger so we're going to use the primary colors mainly uh i've got lots of blue, a dark blue I've chosen on my palette. We've got a green, but you can always mix green with your yellow and blue. I've got yellow, red, and lots of white as well. Okay, so I've got red is my favourite colour, that's right. So paint's ready. I'll let you, I'll just check for a little bit while you get your bits ready as well. Water's ready, brushes are ready. I've also got just some kitchen paper, although we may not need that much. And also for a palette, I'm just using a paper plate, just an old one from the studio. But whatever you want to use is absolutely fine. So this is what we're going to have a go at today. This lovely Van Gogh starry night. Now again, if you want to challenge yourself, you don't have to copy me exactly. And um, you could always take it in your own way. So I would suggest if you want a little bit of a challenge, Try and get the technique in the background here of the starry night. But then when you come to do the silhouette at the front, you don't have to do a tree. Van Gogh's done a tree in his, if you look up here. It's a tree shape. 
you didn't have to do that. You could do whatever you wanted. You could put an animal in there if you want to, right in that foreground. You could um, do a musical instrument. You could make it quite abstract. So we're going to kind of work in the style of Van Gogh today, the Victorian painter, but you can still take it wherever you want, or you can copy me exactly and then have a go at another time yourself and just recreate something different. So, are we ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ella's ready, she wants to get painting. So everyone, we are going to, I'm gonna grab my big brush, a really nice big brush. If you, whichever big brush you've got, if you are doing it in felt it pens, what you need to do first is get some blue sky in there but you might want to pop the stars in place if you're doing it in fact a pen if you're painting along with me we're going to add quite a lot of water using the brush not pouring it on using the brush we're going to add some water to our blue now what this does is just thin it down a little bit so it will spread better so i'm just mixing a bit of water like this into my dark blue Okay, from my big brush just a little bit not loads it just gives it a nice coverage on the paper or the canvas and we're literally going to paint two about two or three fingers up from our bottom of our paper so we're going I'm going to do it vertically just to get it covered don't worry too much about um, it, you know, don't worry if it's not too even, because this is just the background to our sky. And Van Gogh was all about texture and thick paint and seeing your brush stroke. So don't worry if it's not perfectly flat, because actually that will add lots of nice, interesting points to it. So I'm going to cover my background in blue. This is job number one. Working on the style of Van Gogh today. If you're just joining us, hello. I can see, ah, oh, hello, Amy. Nice to see you. Oh, I'm glad it's your favorite painting. That's good to know. Oh, and you two of Broick. <laughs> Say hello, because you two are all watching, my love. Hello, hello. Broick School. Our favourite school, <laughs> yeah, because Isla goes there. <laughs> and uh, if anyone else is watching from any other schools, do drop me a message. So what we're doing is we're just adding a little bit of water using our brush to our blue. And the reason we're doing this, because we're using acrylic, the reason we're doing this because it goes on better. It's a bit smoother. Okay. So we're, going, we're leaving a little gap at the bottom and we're covering the whole thing. Isla's nearly done hers. So I'll show you what Isla's up to. Uh, not really. <laughs> if there's anyone in Isla's class that's watching today, feel free to say hi. Yeah, because I can Because that. Isla would love to say hi back. She's been very excited. <laughs> yeah about the fact that some of you might be here. Okay, so there is my blue of my starry sky. Now we're doing a kind of simple version of the Van Gogh up here. This is his actual, well it's not his actual painting because that I would be very happy if it was. This is just a, a photocopy, but the painting up here we're going to do a nice simple version using simple shapes and actually impressionists did this they had they kind of simplified the shapes and sometimes distorted them as they made them a little bit odd and not exact because it all added to the like expression so impressionist is all about expressing yourself and being bright and bold and colorful so we're going to have a go at that today so i've got my blue okay now with that brush don't need to change it with that brush I'm going to dip into the green I haven't changed the color I haven't gone and cleaned my brush sorry I have changed the color. I haven't gone and cleaned my brush I'm just going straight in I might even add a little bit of the ultramarine blue that I've got into this 
because what I want to do is create a deeper green. So in my palette, I've used the green that I've got and I'm just darkening it. Now, if you want to do this, use the blue you've got and add a little bit of blue in there. And we're going to, we're going to run this along the bottom. So this bit is the landscape that he's got at the bottom, the land. Okay, so we're just going to go all the way along. You can do it in a little bump if you like, so it looks like a hill. You can do it however you like, but we're going to change to our green. That's nice, Isla. And just run it along the bottom here. Doesn't matter if you've got a little bit of blue in it. Because it would just deepen that colour. Okay, so don't worry about that at all. Don't worry if you can see brush strokes. And however you want the land to be, you can do a nice, bumpy, grassy landscape at the bottom. You can keep your swirly brush marks in there if you want. You don't have to straighten them out. It's all about leaving those brush marks in. So we've got, I'll bring it a bit closer. And I'll show you Isla's. We've got a blue for the night sky and a bumpy green land at the bottom. And Isla has done that too, but with A4 paper, like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create these kind of swirly sections the bit that make it very Van Gogh-esque. And if I show you my painting that I did before, we're going to have a go at these shapes here. So we're going to go all the way around like this in a swirl. They're kind of like S's, S shapes, swirly S shapes. We're going to do that. Ah, oh, Willow's on. Hello, Willow. Hello, Willow. I'm just kind of, I'm catching my eye. Uh, who else is around? Let's have a little look. Oh, Callie and Eliza, hello, it's nice to see you. And Lily and Daisy as well, nice to have everyone back. Oh, thank you ever so much for painting along with us today. And I hope you feel like you're learning something new. And as I say, if you want, if you're older or if you're very confident at art, to challenge yourself, go big, try and go big. And also if you're in, uh, you know, kind of key stage two, key stage three, in that, in that, um, in those classes, a good way of doing this is just keep layering your paint and adding detail. Okay, so if you're if you're in key stage one, you might stop once we've got the simple shapes in. That's completely up to you. Um, but if you're older or you're really confident art or you want to push yourself, then get in all the detail in the late, later stages. So we're going to put these swirls in now, these nice swirls. And to do that, we're going to mix. Again, we might want to get the, rid of the green, so I'm going to colour change my brush, so I'm going to give it a good, really good mix in the water to get rid of it. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to dry my brush because I want a little bit of water on my brush. And then I'm going to mix a light blue with the white and the ultramarine. Okay, so a really nice, what a light blue. So I'm going to put my move my white over a little bit, pick up some blue, and mix it in. When we're mixing colours, it's always better to start with your light colour and add small amounts of your dark colour. If you do it the other way around, you end up using a lot of paint, and it takes a long time. You don't have the you kind of um, don't have the control over it. You end up going oh. That wasn't the colour I wanted. And then you add more paint. So if you start with your light colour, which is the white, and add to it some blue in small quantities, then you should get the colour you want. So I'm aiming, let me see if I can get that in the right light, for a very light, can you see? It's quite a light blue colour. You'll see it better when it goes on the canvas. So Isla's mixing a light blue. No, I'm not. Not yet. You're drying, washing your brush. Yeah, because it's, we're still 
green. A bit of greeny. Give it a good wash. So once you've mixed your light blue, we're going to add some swirls. If you want to, you can always swap to a smaller brush for this. I'm going to be brave. Where am I? I might go, no, I'm going to be brave. I'm going to be brave and go for my big brush. So we're going to do some nice swirls. So like I said, like an S shape. So starting at the top, straight over your blue, we're going to do an S shape. And you can use Van Gogh as a guideline. You can copy me or you can just make your own S shape on your, on your canvas, whatever you want on your paper. So go around like this. Hmm. Making a really nice swirl. Don't worry if some of the marks are a bit dry or that the blue is mixing in a little bit. It'll all add to it, so don't worry about that. If you're using felt tips or pencil crayon or something like that, you can draw yourself in the swirls. Like this. So I'll bring it a bit close for the felt tip pen. If you're using felt tip pens, it's just about getting these shapes in. The other thing I did with the oil pastels was I cheated a little bit and I used blue paper. And then I added a light blue pastel or crayon, whatever you prefer, over the top to do the swirls. Okay. If you've made a mistake and you're like, oh, actually, that hasn't worked, especially if you're not painting along and you're doing something different, then just start again. You can always rewind the video. Our classes are live, they're free, and they're um, here for you to rewind and have another go or do in your own time. So I've got my blue swirl. I'm then going to put another kind of S shape just here. Oh, it's not turned into a shape, it's turned into a stuff shape. Okay, let's fix that. It's more like a seahorse. It does look a bit like a seahorse. That's okay. Kind of a bit different. Nice! I was done a lovely swirl. Let me show you. <laughs> let me show you, let me show you. I was done some lovely swirls. Swirly, swirly. Really nice, Isla. Thank you. I prefer my swirl on that one. But we will keep going. Oh, Clara says hello. Oh, hello, Clara. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Clara. <laughs> you want me to touch you? Wait, you can touch it. Put it. You can see it. Well, see it. Oh, hi, Peggy. Hello, hello. So I've got my two swirls, sort of swirls. Don't worry if they're not exactly right. So say it doesn't matter. I'm then going to put another line over the top in this same colour, going over here. I'll show you what I mean. So it's just, it's not going to join with the green. It's just going to go kind of along like that. This is all about getting those lovely shapes in. I'm going to darken my blue, my, the blue I made a little bit, just a tiny bit. So this is all about getting those simple shapes down to start with. And I'm just, I'm just going to add a darker blue in there. You don't have to do this, this is me being a bit, I just wanted a little bit of blue, darker blue is better. Not too dark. There we go. Okay. So we've got three of the main, well actually we've got four of the main shapes. So we've got the top swirl, the swirl in the middle, the kind of line that goes over the landscape, and then you've got your greenery landscape at the bottom. So there are all the shapes that we need. And then the fun bit, we're going to put in the moon and we're going to put in the stars, the nice bit. So this time I am going to swap my brush. So I'm just going to clean that one up, make sure it's nice and clean for when I'm ready to use it again. So if you are doing felt tip pens today, we're going to now put the stars in. So you need to swap to a really nice bright yellow. That's one brush clean and done. I'm going to swap to just a bit of a smaller one. And I'm still going to use some white 
into my yellow. So I'm, this will make, if you just use the yellow straight out of the pot, you won't have that luminosity, that kind of brightness that we want. So we're going to add a little bit of white just to really kind of make it really lovely and bright. And we can put that then straight over our blue. And we're going to do a really, really big moon. So this is what we're going to have a go at now. We're going to do the back big circle of yellow. And then we're going to put as many stars in as you like. Now, one thing I did find out, which was quite interesting, is um, Van Gogh did a different star. If I bring this, I don't know whether I can bring it forward to you, but he did a different star just here. I don't know whether you can see that very well. Ooh, there it is. So all the others are very yellowy, and this one, right next to the tree here, is really white, and it's the brightest star. And that is he. Um, that apparently is Venus. He painted Venus, which is the morning star, and he's made it really, really bright in the sky. I thought that would be the baby Jesus star this morning, Christmas. <laughs> no, it's not. No, 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 it's not Christmas. I don't know when he painted this actually. I don't know what month, but no, it's um, definitely not Christmas. Baby so Jesus. this one here is the brightest star, and that's because he painted Venus, which is really, I found that quite interesting. So we're going to, and oh, my water's getting a bit dirty. Yeah, but my nice yellow is nice. And we're going to put in this, um, this moon. So nice and big, a big, bold circle in the top right corner of your canvas or paper. Big, bold circle. If you want to, you can leave your swirly circular marks. Swirly marks. You don't have to have flat colour. You can add some your paintbrush will naturally, if you go round in a circle, it will leave those nice swirly marks. And that's very typical of Van Gogh, leaving his brush strokes, not flattening them out, using nice thick paint. It's a nice circle for your moon. And then leave that, don't try and do anything else. Oh, thank you. Um, and then you can do some stars. So you don't have to copy where mine are, you can do as many as you like, we're just going to do some circles. It doesn't matter if they're the same size or not, you can do big ones, you can do little ones, just little yellow circles in that lovely whitey yellow paint that you've mixed. Now if I'm going too fast or you're not sure what I'm up to, or you want to rewind, feel free. And uh, you can always try again. Or you can watch it later. If you like, actually, I haven't got all the stuff today. What we're doing is nice. Van Gogh style starry nights. So, I'm going to put some more of these in. Just some circles, wherever you want them, in the sky, as many or as little as you want. Like it? I do. Do you want to do any more? If you want, you can put the big Venus one. I'm not sure I can fit because of my swirl. I haven't got many places to put that, so I might not do that bit. I'm pop it up here. Yeah, because of my sword, it, I don't really have any place to do it as well. Well, when our swirls are done, we could <coughs> big one starring. I think we could do. I might just put one on the edge of the paper there as if it's just peeking out. Okay. So we have our stars, we have our moon, we have our lovely swirly sky shapes and what we're going to do now is we're going to use that yellow and we're going to make little marks now this i love doing this um 
if you want to to um sorry i'm trying to think of my brush um if you want to join me and continue the painting so this is where it's going to get a little bit more technical um there's the basic kind of van gogh starry night if you are younger children Ooh, you might amazing. you might be thinking oh wow i really enjoy painting that that's absolutely fine the only thing you could do now if you wanted to is you could put a nice black silhouette of a tree or you could do a bush or you could do an animal or you could put anything so it's just so that you've got something in this lovely foreground if you are a little bit older and you want to keep painting what we're going to do is we're going to put some little marks all the way around our stars and all the way around our moon and we're going to try and mimic try and copy what van gogh did with his little brush strokes okay so it's quite therapeutic because it's just a bit of mindful painting um, but it can take a long time. So what we're going to do is do little brush strokes all the way around. So you pick up your yellow paint just on the tip of your brush. If, you, if you've if you got too much paint on your brush, just wash it, dry it, and just pick up a small amount of paint on your brush like that. Okay, and we're going to do little marks all the way around. We're even going to do little yellow marks in our swirls, all here, and we're just going to use the same colour. So I'll show you. We're going to just try and keep in the same direction. We want circles, okay? So you're thinking circles, almost like little stitches, little, little stitch marks all the way around. And this the reason he did this was it gave that when when you don't just like when you look at the sun you can see the sun the bright round circle of the sun but then there's all this light coming off that circle and this is what that this suggests so it's all the light the kind of radiant light that comes off the little stars you can do this as big or as small as you like just little dots but it's all trying to get the right direction so if you're painting along with me now, we're just doing little, almost little stitch marks, so little lines all the way in a circular, I'll bring it a bit closer so you can see. Little lines of yellow all the way around the stars. You can do them quite close together. And you're just gonna keep going trying to keep it circular around the, around the stars, because the stars are circular. Don't worry if some of them overlap or if some of the paint is thick and some of it's dry, all of that adds to it. Okay, so don't be worried or scared of that. Just keep going. So all the way around. Sometimes with paintings, we get so the, the actual painter, the artist, like me or you or Isla, we're focusing so much in on what we're doing that we see things that we might classify as mistakes. You might think, oh, that doesn't look very good. But it doesn't matter because paintings, when they're viewed from afar, when they're viewed up on the wall, it all comes together and it all looks really good. So that tiny little mark that you think, oh, that's in the wrong place. Oh, that's annoying. Don't worry about it. In fact, all, uh, nearly every adult that comes to my art classes and child in my art classes, they're so focused on their painting, it's so close up, and they're like, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. It's... And then as soon as I move it away from them and stand it back, they're like, oh, actually, it does look really nice. They're really pleased with it. So don't worry if it's not exactly circular or you haven't got the mark exactly. Just go for it and enjoy that process of making little tiny stitch marks I've already made mine. All the way round. Ah, oh, lovely. So Isla has done hers. Do, 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 do. Like that. Okay. And then, once you've done that, same colour, don't change. We're going to add little stitch marks, but instead of in circular motions, we're going to follow the swirl pattern. So we're going to go in the direction of the swirl. So you need to pick up your yellow. And we're going to do little 
marks all the way in our light blue area here. Just copying what Van Gogh, keeping in the direction of your swirl. And the bottom swirl, just follow the path that you've created with that shape. Don't suddenly go down vertically. Don't try and do diagonal, just little marks that follow that line all the way up and round the shape and along here as well. Now, if you're a confident artist or you're an older child, what we would do with this acrylic or paint is we'd add lots of this. So lots of yellows, lots of blues. We'd go back to our ultramarine, we'd go back, back to our dark blue, we'd add that in and we'd kind of make it all now in this you, in this mark so we'd go over the whole thing and we just build the whole painting up slowly with little little marks because we've got what's underneath what we've done to start with is the structure of the painting and then we're adding the marks and building up that layer and texture and all those different colors with different yellows oranges things like that but if you're a younger painter then just keep it very simple. So you want to just add a few, just the suggestion of them. So once you've got those in there, you've got your yellow marks, and you've put them around your stars, we're going to mix some orange. Isla, how do we mix orange? Red and yellow. Red and yellow. Do we add lots of red and a little bit of yellow? No. Nah. So we're going to items colour first. <gasps> we do. So we're going to mix an orange using a light yellow. I'm just gonna move it over here. My paints are drying out a little bit, so I'm gonna add a bit of water to mine. And then I'm just gonna dip a tiny amount of red. Look, Tinsy Wincy, <laughs> Tinsy Wincy snap. Snap. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to pop that into our yellow. Because as I say, if you do it the other way around, you, you're going to waste a lot of paint. And that would be a shame because that you might have been able to paint lots of paintings with that. So try and do your lightest colour first. And you want to mix a nice orange colour, quite a deep colour. So I'll just show you where I'm at. So I've got orange. I'm going to make it even redder. So I'm, but I've got that control because I haven't gone with loads of red to start with. So I'm going to add a little bit more red into my yellow to make orange. I'm finding anywhere there's room on the palette. If your palette hasn't got much room, you can always grab another one. I think I'm right. There aren't many more colours we're going to do. So, with our orange, we're going to put a little dot of orange in the centre of our stars to make them even brighter. Can you see the orange? A little bit. like that. I'm also going to put some flex little marks again into my sky here. Just a few, not too many. You don't want to overdo it. Don't get too excited. Sometimes Isla gets very excited and uh, it all turns to one colour. But uh, you have to kind of hold back That's a little true bit. sometimes. I usually go and I'm going all together and then I'm like, oh. Uh, yeah, we ended up just mix it. It, using the paper as a palette as opposed to um, painting. But that's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody <laughs> makes mistakes. Even me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some orange. 
on there. Now I'm going to pick up my orange. Hopefully your moon is nice and dry. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do this lovely crescent shaped moon. It's at a slight tilt and it's very pointy. So I'm going to try and get that in and we're going to get that in with our orange. Okay, so we're going to I'm just going to move my board over so I've got finger space. There we go. So let's do a really nice finger space. Really nice C shape. Like now mine's not showing up very well, so I'm gonna to have to let that dry a little bit. I'll show you closer. There's my moon shape. Oops. Um, there's my moon shape, but it's not the paint isn't very thick at the moment, so I'm gonna to have to let it all dry and then thicken it up later. Yeah, mine is that's okay. It looks really nice. <laughs> So what we're going to do now is go back to our yellow and we're going to add some marks around our moon. So again, to get that kind of illuminating feel, that glow of light that comes off a star, we're going to add some marks all the way around our moon. I think Isla's already done this. Yep. So we're going to add just some nice marks in a circular motion all the way we can go out a little bit don't worry if it crosses over near some stars just keep going what's those lovely little marks around put some more around your other stars if you like so there's our kind of basic painting Okay, now if you want to, I'm just going to keep going with lots of different colours. I'm going to start adding even more little lines all the way around my swirls, all the way around the stars. I'm going to add some white as well, just pure white around those areas too. And I'm just going to keep building my painting. You don't have to do this. Um, if, you, if you're happy, you can stop if you want to. But if you want to make your painting look even better then keep painting with me. So I'm just going to add some whites now. All the way around my stars. If you're doing this in felt tip pen, you just need to make those little marks just like we've been doing with the paint. So if you're doing, um, if you're using crayon felt tip pens or pencil crowns, you can do exactly the same thing, I'll show you, the only thing you must remember is to try and keep them in the same direction, so here's our felt tip pen version, you see how we've just got all those swirls going round and round in different yellows and oranges, so you can still make a lovely starry night picture and with the pastels as well, those marks all the way round, keeping in the direction. And Van Gogh did this throughout his whole painting. He used oils for this one and he used oil paints, which are a bit like acrylic, but, um, they do, but oils are even thicker and you can see all his brush strokes he's just gone in that direction keeping that texture all the way through his painting so we're just going to keep going for a little bit getting some stars in there getting the white around the stars even put some a few white marks in your blue have you done that are you doing white i'm just about to I was going to do it too. And I'm going to go back to the ultramarine in a minute. I'm going to go back to our dark, dark blue that I started at the start. What in your mouth, little bit, take a bit of this off? Can I, mummy, I just had a little bump there. 
in the squirt one of That's this okay. slip swirl and just took it off as I need some white. Nice, let me show everyone. Mm. I'll show you Isla's how she's getting on. Very pretty. Do you like it? <laughs> yeah. It's nice, it's really lovely, well done. So keep going with these lovely marks. I'm going to add some dark blue now. So I'm going to go back to my ultramarine. Actually, could you just pass me some ultramarine, please, my lovely, so I can... Thank you. It's dried out because we need a radiator. Yeah. Not you're, you've got loads, you're fine. Yeah. And I'm going to put some of this dark blue. Now, I know this seems scary because we've, you know, done lots of light colours and I'm going back to my dark. I'm going to add just some of these lovely dark blues back into my swirls and soften the edges a little bit. Keeping in the direction. That's all you have to remember is just to try and keep the movement in the same way. I even put a bit of With lots of little. I even put a bit of green in there because it mixed up a bit, but that's still okay. That's okay. It just makes it look a bit different. That's fine. Might go a bit greeny if it's mixing into the yellow, blue and green. Mm. Don't worry too much. So we're building our painting. A bit like Lego. You have to start with the first brick bricks. And then go to the next keep adding. Bricks. And you tend to put all those little finer details on at the end. Now with this blue, I'm also going to do some, I'm going to split up my fields. So in this area here, this bottom bit, with the bl dark blue that I've got, I'm just going to make some field shapes. Because remember, impressionists are all about colour. You could use black if you wanted to. I'm going to use blue. So making some fields. That looks really nice, actually. Thank you. Are you going to do that? Are you going to break up your fields or are you in the middle of something else? No, I'm going to do some fields. I'm going to do some fields. Now, on Van Gogh's painting, he's built a whole town down this area at the bottom. He's got lots of houses. Lots and lots of houses. And you can see the rooftops of houses at the bottom. You can do that if you want to. You could add some houses. I'm not going to today. I'm just going to leave it as broken up fields. I might put some different. I might just add a little bit of texture in there as if the fields have been ploughed. Um, but you don't have to. You could do whatever you wanted. And once you've got this as a backdrop, you can paint whatever you like over the top. So I'm just doing some lines in different directions this time because fields have lines in different, they're kind of separated in different ways. I'm just tickling the paper with kind of a light bluey green colour that was on my palette. So I had that light blue, I added a bit of the green in there, mixed it up. You don't need extra colours, mixed it all in, and I'm using that just to get some interest, something different at the back here.
Uh, at the front, sorry. Not the back. Front. And what you could do now is you could keep painting lots of different colours of, well, the colours on your palette, the greens, the blues, into this area. You can do it all here, look. So you can continue to build up your painting. But if you don't want to do that, and you're thinking, you know what, I'm quite pleased with what I've got so far, that's absolutely fine. What we're going to do next is we're going to put the silhouette of the tree. You're going to need black for this. So we're going to put the silhouette of the tree as the last thing. But make sure you're happy with the background first. If you want, you can add detail all in your fields. You can pause this video if you want to, and then come back to it when I'm doing when um, when you've finished your background and do the black tree. But I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to pop in the silhouette, that Thank black you. silhouette. Oh, I've forgotten black. <laughs> Good job. I've got trees to help me today. So, are you ready for some black? No, I've got this brush. I'm ready. Let me give Isla some black. So are you happy, Isla, with all of your yep. marks? So I'll show you how Isla's done. I think Isla just needs a little bit more white around her stars, but she can decide that. So there's Isla's gorgeous Van Gogh inspired painting of A Starry Night. There's mine. So if I was going to take this further, which I'd like to do, but then you'll just might get a bit bored of watching me all the little marks is I just continue to build up the whole painting in those little marks so it's very time consuming it takes a lot of determination um, to finish it but that would complete the picture just keep building up tell you what I will do actually before I move on to the black silhouette because also I want to make sure the paint is dry before I move on to black is I'm just going to see if I can deepen my moon so if you've done your moon um, and it hasn't come out very deep the moon really does need to shine so grab yourself some more paint now I'm just going to go over that's better nice starry night with my c-shape crescent moon oh that red hasn't gone very well why hasn't gone very well my red because it keeps mixing with the blue do you want to borrow some of my orange oh yes please okay, well then, I i'm not going to need it now so what i'm going to do as the last job of our gorgeous painting today is the black silhouette I hope you're getting on okay. I hope you're all there painting away and enjoying it. Those little marks are hard work and I do get that, but it will make it look fantastic if you persist and you keep going with lots of little brush strokes, lots of little stitch marks in different blues and different yellows and whites and just build your whole painting up, keeping in the direction of the shapes that you've got. So don't suddenly like go off, like put a mark where it um, goes over into the other shape. Try and keep it all flowing in that direction and then it will look really, really Van Gogh-like. What I'm going to do is just paint in the black silhouette. So just with black paint, we're gonna put something in the foreground. So a nice dry brush. Uh, I'm going to mainly use the point of my brush. If I put a lot of pressure on, it's going to go a bit dry and it will drag. So I'm just gonna try and use the points of my brush so I can get a nice shape. So starting at the top here, and I know this seems scary. We do this in watercolor um, in, the, in the adult classes and everyone's like, oh, I don't want to put the foreground in. But it brings the painting together and it will make it 
look fantastic. Now your tree can be anything, okay? It can be any shape. I'm gonna try and mimic Van Gogh's shapes here on his, but you can do it however you like, so don't feel restricted. Nice, okay. So starting at the top, try not to smudge your work, try and keep it at a bit of a distance. But starting at the top, we're gonna just do a wiggly line Try and just get the outline in there. Don't worry too much about filling with color yet. So I'm going right from the top, working all the way down. And it goes all the way down to the bottom here. So almost from the top of your canvas, from right at the top of your paper, all the way down to the bottom. Now, it will look fantastic. And don't forget to show me. Please don't forget to show me. I'd love to see, I loved seeing all the artwork. I had loads of it. I could only upload nine of them on, um, on social media. So just get this lovely shape in. Like a vase, mm -hmm. a vase shape. I thought, shape, I thought it? Um, little twig bits would look like a little leaf, wouldn't it? It does look a bit of a leaf. So there's my outline. I'm not sure. Look, you know what? It's quite nice having the camera there because I can see where a shape might have gone wrong. I'm just going to bring this out a little bit more like that. And then I'm going to fill that inside. With black paints. If you're doing this with pencil crayon, um, I would suggest grabbing a black felt tip if you've done it in pencil crayon, or if you're doing it in pastel, get your black pastel or even a sharpie or something like that. And um, if you're doing it in felt tip pen, just go for it. Go straight over everything that you've done in the black. Okay, you can even with them um, pencil crayon and felt it pens you can still layer you can still get those layers in there so we're going straight over all of our work all of the things we've done with black to create the silhouette at the front so this is a slightly simplified version of our van gogh um, again, if you want to challenge yourself or you're feeling confident or this is one of your favourite pieces and you really want to um, work at it and continue to do it. I think mine looks like a little man. Then you can add, you just need to um, just add a bit more paint to your edges so that it crisps them up a little bit. Um, you can add more detail in here. So he's added some dark browns into his. Uh, and some greens as well. So he's gone back to the original colours. Um, it's up to you. You can do that, but I'm just going to keep it black. Nice and simple. And we're nearly there. I think I am there. Have you done? I think that's me as well. Thank God, starry night. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to do to it? Ooh. I'll show you why this is really done. She's just changing the shape a little bit of one of her branches. Oh, she's bringing it out quite a lot. That's okay. That's fine. It'll look much more better. Just isn't? fill that little, you've got a little gap in there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ah, and <laughs> the unveiling. Are you ready? Isla's one. <laughs> Isla's bang off. <laughs> her starry night, my starry night, and 
I hope you can show me yours. So send your photos. I'd love to see them when you're finished, even if it's your second attempt, your first attempt, or you just had a little go with pencil crayon. It doesn't matter. I'd love to see what you've done. And if you want to donate, thank you very much. Can I just say a huge thank you actually to all the people that have donated last week. It was really kind and Judith especially, a special thank you to Judith. Thank you very much. Um, but if you did want to donate, I have a PayPal page. Um, the classes are completely free. But if you want to add a little mini donation, um, that would be very much appreciated. It helps towards maintaining the building, but it also helps towards keeping our classes affordable and inclusive for everyone, because that is my ethos. So it would be really lovely. Thank you very much. And next week, we will be here, one o'clock, live. And we hope to see you soon. Thank you ever so much, everyone, for watching. And I'll see you soon. Bye. You can say bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>